The symbols of atomic energy are becoming increasingly familiar to all of us in this age of the atom. Inventions pertaining to atomic radiation, like the nuclear reactor these technicians are working with, are bringing scientific achievements undreamed of a few decades past. Particularly promising are the advances being made in the biological sciences through the application of the atomic... Elements made radioactive artificially in the nuclear reactor are frequently used as sources of such radiations. In the metal cylinder coming out of this nuclear reactor is one of these elements which has been bombarded and now contains a radioactive isotope. Such radioactive isotopes are among the newest tools to be applied to problems in biological research. Sometimes the scientist wishes to observe the effects of the radiations themselves. Alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays and neutrons are some of the most familiar kinds of radiation. Gamma rays are particularly useful in the study of living things. Gamma rays, like other kinds of radioactive energy, affect living cells. If the effect is serious enough, the entire organism becomes ill and is stunted or dies like the plants nearest the source of gamma rays emanating from radio cobalt located inside this pole. Most radiation experiments, like the one going on here, do not destroy the living thing being tested. For example, geneticists apply gamma rays to living cells to discover the effects of radiation on growth and heredity. In one kind of experiment, one-celled forms of life are used. Here, a one-celled form of life is reproducing by simple division. Some forms multiply by sexual reproduction. Does radiation affect the rate at which such cells reproduce? In a typical experiment, the geneticist seeks the answer. He transfers a culture solution into a radiation chamber. This culture solution provides a favorable medium in which paramecia, a kind of one-celled animals, live while being subjected to gamma rays. Next, the living paramecia are placed in the culture solution. They may be irradiated in a lead safe like this. Inside is a source of radioactive cobalt that releases gamma rays. After irradiation, the paramecia are carefully observed under the microscope so that the number of cell divisions can be counted. The geneticist finds that the irradiated cells do reproduce faster than cells that have not been irradiated. Future generations of paramecia will also be studied to see if the effects of radiation are transmitted from one generation to the next. Experiments using radioactive elements are being applied to larger forms of life as well as to single-celled forms of life. Here, corn plants are the subjects of experimental work. Gamma rays, released by the radioisotope cobalt located within the hollow pole, are affecting cells of the corn pollen. Experiments are also conducted in special indoor plant growth rooms like this one, where they can be controlled even more closely than is possible in the field. The plants in this growth chamber are being subjected to gamma rays released from a radioactive element inside the lead container. The problem is to discover how this atomic radiation may affect the hereditary characteristics of living things. That is, how do radiations affect the tiny units of cells called genes that transmit hereditary characteristics? The genes are represented here as bead-like bodies attached together in chains. Every living thing inherits its characteristics from the genes of the parent cells that have gone before and passes on similar characteristics to its descendants. Atomic radiation interferes with the normal process by breaking apart the chromosomes which carry the inheritance genes. In this way, radiation affects inheritance. Chromosomes like these from corn are large enough to see under the microscope. Here, there are some detached fragments of chromosomes, particularly at the upper right, proving that the atomic bombardment they have undergone has caused some of them to break apart. The exact results of such changes on future generations can be discovered through growth experiments. The results may be beneficial. Already a strain of corn that is especially resistant to fungus disease 
has been produced through irradiation studies in which radiations have affected the parent plant cells. Scientists use radioisotopes in another entirely different kind of experiment, the tracer study. In this kind, they try to avoid any effects of the radiations themselves. For example, in this experiment, plants called algae are being given radioactive carbon dioxide in order to study the food-making process carried on by their cells. Here is another research project in which radioactive carbon dioxide is used. The plants in this special greenhouse live in an atmosphere rich in radioactive carbon dioxide. Radioactive carbon dioxide is piped into the greenhouse. One objective is to produce quantities of radioactive plant products such as drugs, which can be used in experiments that may lead to improved techniques of diagnosing and treating some human diseases. Animals as well as plants may be the subjects of research using atomic radiation. Studies in nutrition often depend on the use of rats. Here, the experimenter uses a rat that has been fed radioactive table sugar. The experimenter places the rat in a special container where all of its waste products can be collected for analysis. By knowing how much radioactive sugar was fed and how much radioactive waste is given off, the physiologist may discover more facts about the chemical processes that take place when a carbohydrate is digested and used. Similar experiments may be performed to study the use of proteins, fats, or other types of food. The distribution of an element in an animal's body can also be tested using rats. In a typical experiment, blood is taken from a rat previously injected with radioactive iron. The blood will be tested for radioactivity to find how much of the radio iron is still present. To do this, the iron is removed from the blood sample and electroplated onto a small metal ring called a planchet. The amount of radio iron that electroplates out on the planchet can be exactly determined by using radiation counting equipment. Based on such experiments, the dosages and techniques of using radio iron for treating disease may be perfected. Much of the research in biology is done in the hope of contributing to the welfare of humans. This is particularly true in the study of diseases like cancer. Learning to control a disease depends in part upon understanding the processes by which the disease develops. In cancer, animal experimentation is especially helpful. Experiments are planned to study how cancer develops. To do this, cancer may artificially be induced in animals through excessive exposure to radioactivity. Here, beads containing a radioactive isotope are strapped to the rat's body. The radiations released cause the rat to develop cancer. Other experiments are devised to study techniques of treating cancer. One technique employs the cyclotron, a machine that can produce a stream of extremely fast-moving atomic particles. In this case, a beam of radiations called deuterons is used. The treatment is given in a specially shielded room called a deuteron cave. The treatment depends upon focusing a narrow pencil-like stream of deuteron particles on the tumor. From time to time, the rat is turned so that the tumor is affected from different directions. The tumor receives a much larger amount of radiation than any of the surrounding tissue. In this way, the effects of radiations can be beneficial to the organism as a whole. Experiments of this type seem promising, but such treatments are not applied to humans until they have been thoroughly tested on animals. Radiobiologists use sources of radioactivity for internal human use as well as external use. Here, a liquid containing a radioactive isotope is being prepared for human use. Radioactive atoms in the solution will attack the cancer from within the body. Safeguards are continually being perfected to avoid damaging the healthy tissues of patients or those administering the treatment. Since atomic radiation improperly used may be extremely dangerous, much research has been done to discover the most effective protective measures. In league with physical scientists, Biologists are learning how best to protect humans from dangerous amounts of radiation. Protective clothing, 
barriers made of radiation resistant materials, remote control equipment, and medical tests are some of the measures developed through experimentation to guard against harmful exposure. From their raw material stage, through their use, to the ultimate disposal of any waste that remain, radioactive materials are handled according to techniques prescribed as the result of painstaking biological research. The future applications of atomic radiation can scarcely be imagined, but progress is being made and research is leading the way. And in this research, the biological sciences continue to take their place in the ongoing pattern of achievement by advancing man's understanding of life itself. <laughs>